welcome to the uh, second part of carbohydrates yeah, that is uh, in the uh, first part is the part 2 in the first part we have uh, learned what is carbohydrate what are the classification of carbohydrates like sugars and non sugars and sugars mainly comes under on the basis of the hydrolysis sugars can be further classified into subdivided into uh, monosaccharides and oligosaccharides and non sugars uh, will come under polysaccharides and monosaccharides the best examples for monosaccharides we have learned is glucose and fructose glucose is a dextra rotatory its optical properties are dextra rotatory so it is called as dextrose while fructose is uh, levo rotatory or it is called as levulose okay uh, in the case of uh, oligosaccharide uh, precisely uh, that is a uh, disaccharide that is the most important one the best example is uh, sucrose in the case of uh, polysaccharide uh, we shall discuss uh, starch cellulose and chitin so in the last class uh, we have learned uh, some of the preparation of uh, glucose its physical properties chemical properties uh, its uh, reactions uh, oxidation uh, reducing action of uh, glucose as well as fructose so it is called uh, reducing sugar etc and uh, in the last section we have learned uh, the d and l configuration based upon the penultimate uh, the secondary oh group that is the second last oh group that is the fifth uh, ca carbon having the oh group if it is on the right hand side that is called the d uh, configuration and if it is on the left hand side that is called the l configuration and that configuration is based upon the uh, structure of glyceraldehyde okay so that is things we have learned in the uh, last section so in this section we shall discuss the uh, hemiacetal formation or the ring uh, structure of the uh, glucose as well as fructose we shall discuss what is epimers and uh, anomers and uh, we shall discuss some of the uh, in the conversion between the monosaccharides uh, like uh, glucose to fructose and fructose to uh, glucose then we shall learn uh, sucrose in detail one of the uh, disaccharide in detail its preparation and its properties and we shall discuss uh, some of the uh, properties like uh, muta rotation then we shall study regarding starch and uh, cellulose and chitin okay so uh, coming to the uh, cyclic structure of uh, mono uh, saccharides okay so that is the hemiacetal formation you can see here you can see here if you take any aldehyde and a uh, uh, alcohol because in the case of uh, carbohydrates it do contain uh, aldehydic or ketonic function group and oh groups okay so when you treat uh, this uh, this one uh, c double bond o aldehyde or uh, carbonyl function group with the uh, this one so you can say that uh, it forms uh, o minus so h will uh, form over here so it will be uh, oh and this uh, or dash will come over here so it forms a uh, hemiacetal uh, structure similarly uh, ketone it forms a hemi uh, ketal structure Okay, let us see uh, the uh, cyclic structure of uh, glucose as well as fructose. So this is the structure of glucose. You can uh, label it 1, 2, 6. It is a hexose, you know. So and second thing, it is a D-glucose because uh, this uh, secondary OH is on the right hand side. It is a D series. Okay, that much things we have learned. So if you take uh, CHO, uh, okay for example uh, i am writing it as here c double bond o h okay so what happens uh, so this is the first carbon so a ring will uh, form between first and uh, fifth carbon okay so usually what happens uh, it will form a shift here so it forms a co minus so there will be a positive charge on the uh, carbon so this uh, electronegative oxygen will form a bond will form a bond with the carbon okay so this uh, h plus the h plus from here this h plus this h plus 
will form a OH over here. So it will be C single bond OH. So this you can see this uh, this hydrogen will be removed from here. So such a kind of structure will be formed. So you can see the structure. You can see the structure. So this is what happens. You will be getting such structure. Okay. Now you can see that this carbon, the first carbon, okay, this carbon, the OH is on the right hand side. This OH is on the right hand side. <coughs> such uh, type of glucose are known as alpha D glucose. So this type of glucose is known as alpha D glucose. This is alpha D glucose. And here the OH is on the other side because what happens uh, sometimes uh, if you make this one, if you uh, you can see that the OH can on the other side also. If the OH is on the left hand side, that is called the beta D glucose. This is called the beta D glucose. Okay, so it forms a cyclic structure. You can see here it is a, a six member ring that is uh, one, uh, two, three, four, five, and six. So it forms a six member ring. So now, now we have a two uh, types of glucose, okay, cyclic structure that is alpha D glucose as well as uh, beta D glucose. So when, when you see this uh, cyclic structure, you can see that uh, it uh, removes its uh, aldehydic function group. But in a mixture, there may be a mixture of uh, open chain as well as cyclic form. So this open chain will uh, give the uh, properties of uh, aldehydic uh, reactions. Okay. So you can uh, isolate these two forms, whereas this alpha glucose, it is having a uh, melting point uh, 146, melting point is 146 degrees Celsius. And it do have a specific rotation uh, plus 120, uh, 112 degree, okay. it is uh, dextra rotatory. While, uh, so it, it can be crystallized from ethanol. This alpha D glucose can be crystallized from ethanol. Coming to the beta D glucose, beta D glucose, you can see the melting point is 150 degrees Celsius and its specific rotation is lesser compared to the uh, alpha D glucose, it is plus uh, 18 degree and it is obtained by uh, crystallizing glucose from pigri. So the important point to be uh, remember is that we can obtain alpha D glucose by uh, crystallization from ethanol while beta D glucose can be obtained by crystallization from pigri. So now uh, you can uh, draw this one to a uh, pyranose structure. So this uh, six membered uh, ring structure uh, commonly referred to as a pyranose because uh, it resembles the structure of pyran. So the pyran is this one, it is pyran, okay, I am drawing uh, 2H pyran. So it is one, it is 2H pyran. So uh, when you draw this one, you will be getting the structure of uh, so this structure is called as uh, pyranose structure. This is called the pyranose structure because it resembles uh, with the uh, pyran, uh, heterocyclic pyran. Now you can see that you can draw this. Uh, for example, I am writing this as one. So this is uh, CH2H1 here. Okay. So CH2H and H. Okay. And this one, two. This uh, H is the HOH. Okay. Here. And this one. OHH, you can see this OH, OHH, and next is HOH, you can see the HOH, and uh, this one for the for example fifth one, let it be fifth, you can see the uh, HOH and the carbon, this sorry oxygen, this oxygen here. So this is alpha D glucose. So you should be able to uh, write its uh, cyclic structure. Similarly, uh, coming to the beta D glucose, uh, for uh, for the time being, I am giving uh, this as one. Okay, so this is CH2OH. Then comes this uh, HOH. Okay, you can see this HOH. Then this uh, OHH. We can see over here this OHH, and this one HOH is here. This HOH, and this uh, final one OHH is here, and the ring oxygen. So it is a six-member ring. So it is called as pyranose. It is called as pyranose. So it, the name is either you can close 
uh, called as alpha D glucose or alpha D glucopyranose or beta D glucose or it can be called as beta D glucopyranose. So that is the cyclic structure of glucose. Coming to the uh, cyclic structure of uh, fructose. So uh, fructose again I have taken the D fructose. Okay. So again uh, it can have uh, both alpha fructose as well as beta fructose. Okay. Uh, alpha fructose I told you fructose is liver rotatory. So its uh, specific rotation is minus 21 degree. The specific rotation is minus 21 degree. Whereas the specific rotation of beta fructose is minus 133 degree. I will show how it uh, forms this one. So here what you can do is I am writing CO, okay, CO, CO, CH2OH, CH2OH. Okay. So for the time being I am writing the alpha uh, factors. So what happens? It forms, uh, it forms a single bond O minus. So this uh, oxygen, this oxygen will make a bond with the this uh, electron deficient carbon. So it makes a bond with this one. Okay, and this uh, H plus. So th this will be more H plus to satisfy the valency of oxygen. So and this H plus will make a bond with this. So this is uh, you can see that the OH is on the right hand side. So it is called the alpha uh, D fructose. So you can see here, this is the uh, alpha D fructose, this is the alpha D fructose, this is the alpha D fructose. And if the OH is on the left hand side, if the OH is on the left hand side, it is called the beta D fructose. And one more point, one more point is that, uh, usually, uh, it forms a, a six-membered uh, pyranose structure. So usually uh, the monosaccharides uh, predominates with the uh, pyranose structure. So usually the pyranose structures uh, predominates in the monosaccharides, while uh, the furanose structure, that is furanose structure, the furanose structure, furanose structure means it is similar to the uh, furan. Okay, such structure. Okay. The furanose structure. Uh, will be you can see the Fresnel structure in the disaccharides. So we shall come to uh, see this structure when we dis uh, discuss the structure of sucrose. So sucrose is the best example of a disaccharide. So all the monosaccharides so usually uh, form a, a pyranose structure, six member structure. That means bond formation between the one and five carbon. Okay. So this is the structure of uh, Fructose, cyclic structure of the fructose. So now you can see that you should be able to distinguish what is uh, D and L glucose or fructose, what is alpha and beta uh, glucose and fructose. So this alpha and beta comes when it is cyclized. Okay. So the uh, the OH of the first carbon, if it is on the right hand side in the cyclic structure, it is called the OH. So that can be uh, visualized by uh, this. Uh, by this uh, hemiastral structure. So he, if it is on the left hand side, okay, this is called beta D fructose. So I hope you understand, you understood what is alpha and beta glucose as well as alpha and beta fructose. Okay. So now let us uh, come to another uh, topic called uh, epimers and anomers. So we can see two uh, uh, configurations that is glucose and galactose okay so this one so you can have a uh, chiral center on the one two three fourth uh, carbon you can have a you can see a chiral center this one so these two compounds are isomers to be precisely they are uh, stereoisomers uh, they are diastereomers they are not uh, enantiomers they are uh, diastereomers. So uh, these uh, diastereomers are formed based upon the chiral center that is the fourth uh, carbon chiral center. So any diastereomers which differ from each other in the configuration you can see that the OH is on the right hand side again it is on the right hand side this is on the left hand side. So based upon the penultimate OH on the left and right we have uh, we have mentioned it at as D and L. If the uh, during cyclization when the first carbon if it is on the left and right it is alpha and beta 
So here it is another thing is chiral uh, carbon. If the OH is on the, you can see here the OH is on the other side and this on the left hand side. Okay. So here such structures are called the. So these are called the epimers. These are called the epimers. So uh, best example for epimers, so it's a open chain uh, structure. Best example is D, uh, D glucose as well as D galactose. So th this D glucose and D galactose is an example of uh, epimers. Now uh, take the structure of glucose. You can see here when you cyclize a glucose, when you cyclize a glucose, you can see here uh, there are alpha as well as beta glucose. Okay, there is alpha as well as beta glucose. Now you can see that in this uh, this uh, chiral center, you can see here this OH is on this side and this on the other side. So based upon this uh, chiral center, based upon its open chain, you can you can have uh, two uh, epimers. So such kind of epimers which formed uh, during uh, cyclization is known as anomers. Okay, epimers formed. Okay, so epimers which different configuration. Uh, at the chiral center during cyclization is known as anomers. So best example for anomers is alpha D glucose and beta D glucose. So any diastereomer which differ in configuration uh, only at the chiral center during cyclization is called, uh, called, uh, called as anomers. If it is open chain, it is called epimers. So cyclic epimers are called as Simply you can say it as anomers. So we have learned what is uh, epimer as well as anomers. So another example of uh, anomers is uh, methyl glucoside. So instead of OH, we can have a methoxy group. Okay, instead of OH, okay, in the case of uh, uh, glucose, the OH is if the OH is replaced by a methoxy group, okay, it is uh, methyl glucoside. So alpha uh, methyl glucoside as well as beta methyl glucose you can see that the methoxy group is on the other way so we have a two configuration so based upon this one and it is obtained during cyclization it is similar to the glucose so it is another example of uh, anomers okay so uh, next another important uh, topic is muta rotation so it is based upon the optical rotation so you know that uh, in uh, any uh, reducing sugars on dissolving in water, their optical rot uh, rotatory powers gradually change to a constant. Okay. If you take, uh, if you take, uh, uh, for example, glucose. Glucose is having its own muta rotation. Its own uh, optical uh, rotation. Okay. When it is dissolved in water, what happens? It is uh, optical rotation uh, changes gradually and it reaches to a uh, constant value. So that phenomena is called muta rotation. So I can say that uh, the change in specific rotation of a sugar solution because it have to be in a solution water. Sugar solution is very important. It have to be in a sugar solution. So as time goes on, it reaches to a constant equilibrium value and that is called the muta rotation. That phenomenon is called the muta rotation. For example, if you prepare a uh, solution of alpha D glucose, okay, alpha D glucose, uh, for example, I am writing here, alpha D glucose, alpha D glucose, its uh, optical properties uh, plus 112.2 degree. So uh, when you make a solution of this one, what happens? It reduced to uh, 52 degree, 52.7 degree. On the other hand, if you take uh, beta D glucose, if you take beta D glucose, if you take beta D glucose, this optical uh, rotation is uh, plus 18, plus 18.7 degree. Okay. So what happened? It uh, increases, it keep increasing and it also reaches to a constant uh, equilibrium value at 52.7 degree. So this uh, phenomenon is called the muta rotation. So now uh, let us uh, see some of the interconversion between the monosaccharides. First, uh, let us uh, discuss how glucose can be converted into fructose. So glucose is uh, first uh, converted into uh, glucose ozone by warming with excess phenyl hydrazine. 
okay by one with excess uh, phenyl hydrazine okay you can uh, you can see the phenyl hydrazine you can prepare the glucose ozone so th this glucose ozone is hydrolyzed to glucose ozone is hydrolyzed to glucose ozone by warming with dilute uh, hydrochloric acid by warming with dilute hydrochloric acid and this glucose ozone is then reduced by zinc in acetic acid zinc in acetic acid to fructose acetic acid to fructose okay so now let us uh, study how uh, fructose is uh, converted into glucose so you can see that fructose uh, is reduced uh, to sorbitol by treating with sodium amalgam okay and this sorbitol is oxidized uh, to uh, gluconic acid this oxidizes to gluconic acid then this gluconic acid uh, loses a water molecule loses a water molecule and it forms a uh, gamma lactone so this gamma lactone uh, is reduced by sodium amalgam is reduced by sodium amalgam and uh, to get the to get the glucose so in this process you can prepare glucose from fructose so after uh, completing uh, the properties of uh, monosaccharides we shall get into uh, the disaccharides the best example of disaccharide is sucrose okay we have learned different properties of uh, glucose as well as fructose okay now let us come to the sucrose so uh, first let us see the industrial preparation of the glucose sorry sucrose from cane sugar okay from the cane sugar so first thing you uh, prepare a can extract the cane sugar by uh, cutting the sugar into a very small pieces you extract the uh, sugar juice so this uh, cane sugar juice is treated with uh, lime okay so uh, to neutralize the uh, organic acid and the uh, coagulated matter is filtered and the filtrate is treated with carbon dioxide okay so this uh, carbon dioxide uh, precipitates uh, excess lime as uh, calcium carbonate it precipitates the excess lime as calcium carbonate and it uh, decomposes the calcium uh, sucrosate to sucrose okay so when you pass a carbon dioxide to calcium sucrosate okay so this uh, calcium sucrosate is obtained by treating uh, the sugarcane juice with the lime so this uh, calcium sucrosate when you pass carbon dioxide to the calcium sucrosate this uh, carbon dioxide will precipitate the excess lime into calcium carbonate and further the calcium sucrosate is decomposed to sucrose then coming to the physical properties of the sucrose sucrose is a colorless crystalline with melting point 185 degrees celsius and it is soluble in water it is dextrorotatory it is dextrorotatory but uh, there is a change uh, because when it is dissolved in this one it will be there is a inversion that we shall uh, discuss later okay so there will be a, uh, inversion of the rotation because uh, it becomes a liver rotator when you dissolve in water because uh, you will be getting glucose as well as uh, fructose and the fructose uh, predominates the optical rotation of the fructose predominates so it shows a liver rotator so there will be inversion of rotation okay coming to its uh, chemical properties uh, on heating uh, nearly 200 degrees celsius sucrose uh, loses water to form a brown amorphous mass called caramel and for the strong heating sucrose decomposes uh, and uh, it yield uh, charry it gives a carbon or charcoal coming to hydrolysis i told you you can uh, on hydrolyzing the uh, disaccharide you will be getting two monosaccharides namely glucose glucose as well as fructose so uh, normally uh, it is done with a dilute mineral acid or in the presence of an enzyme called uh, invertase either you can use a, a mineral acid for hydrolysis either you can use a mineral acid or you can use an uh, enzyme invertase that is present in the yeast so the sucrose is hydrolyzed into uh, equivalent uh, amount of glucose and fructose uh, i told you sucrose is uh, dextrorotatory you can see the specific rotation is plus uh, 16 so uh, you obtain uh, 
glucose that is also dextro rotatory and you obtain fructose that is levo rotatory you can see minus 92 okay but uh, this hydrolytic mixture of glucose this one this one shows this hydrolytic mixture of glucose sorry sucrose or sucrose solution i can say uh, is levo rotatory remember sucrose itself is uh, dextro rotatory but the hydrolytic mixture i mean this one is levo rotatory it is levo rotatory levo rotatory this is because uh, here you can see the uh, value of uh, levo rotation predominates over the uh, dextro rotation so it will be having uh, an amount of minus 40 degree it can move uh, extra so the solution will be levo rotates so this uh, the hydrolysis of sugar is therefore therefore it is known as inversion of cane sugar so this inversion of optical rotation is known as inversion of cane sugar okay now uh, another uh, property we have discussed that uh, sucrose can be converted into calcium sucrosate by uh, treating lime and coming to the fourth one oxidation oxidation when you add a concentrated nitric acid uh, sucrose oxidizes to oxalic acid okay, it is oxidized to oxalic acid next is the uh, dehydration dehydration you can see uh, when uh, sucrose is uh, treated with concentrated sulfuric acid it is dehydrated uh, to form the carbon that is called charring okay and this further uh, when you add further more sulfuric acid uh, it will be liberated as a uh, carbon dioxide okay. and next is uh, action with uh, concentrated hydrochloric acid when sucrose is treated with uh, hcl you can obtain levulonic acid you can obtain levulonic acid coming to the acetylation uh, with acetic anhydride it forms octaacetyl derivative it forms a octaacetyl derivative so that means it forms a octaacetyl derivative that means uh, there is a 8 oh group there is a 8 oh group so it can form 8 uh, acetyl derivative so this indicates uh, sucrose consists of 8 hydroxyl groups again uh, same thing with the methylation again you can confirm the 8 hydroxyl group by doing the uh, methylation the sucrose by treating with dimethyl uh, sulfate by treating with uh, dimethyl sulfate dimethyl sulfate in the presence of a uh, base alkali uh, you can prepare octamethyl sucrose you can prepare octamethyl sucrose fermentation uh, through by means of fermentation of sucrose you can prepare uh, ethanol you can prepare alcohol so first sucrose uh, is uh, treated with uh, an enzyme invertase okay uh, so this yeast enzyme uh, convert the sucrose into glucose as well as fructose okay so this invertase uh, convert i told you uh, during the hydrolysis of uh, sucrose either you can use uh, mineral acid or you can use a uh, enzyme invertase so this uh, glucose and fructose in the presence of an uh, enzyme yeast enzyme zymase okay yeast enzyme zymase it will be converted into ethanol now uh, sucrose is a non reducing sugar whereas glucose as well as fructose are reducing sugar they reduces both tolerance reagent as well as filling solution here sucrose cannot reduce tolerance as well as filling solution so uh, this test can be used to distinguish sucrose from reducing sugars like glucose and fructose okay because when you see the structure of the sucrose we can see that it will not have any kind of uh, aldehyde or ketonic function group during the cyclic stage you can see the cyclic structure similarly sucrose does not react with the hydroxylamine or with the phenyl hydrazine okay so uh, and it will not form oxane or ozone so again these two are the uh, characteristic properties of the uh, uh, glucose as well as fructose so again this reaction uh, with uh, hydroxylamine as well as phenylhydrazine can also be used to distinguish sucrose from uh, glucose as well as fructose 
now coming to the uh, structure of sucrose coming to the structure of sucrose i told you sucrose is a uh, obtained from two monosaccharides like glucose and fructose or i can say sucrose on hydrolysis is lubricating glucose as, uh, glucose as fructose so here this uh, the it forms a cyclic structure with this one sorry with this one and this h will form over here chh okay similarly here it forms i am writing this co okay, it will be forming okay so this forms a with the this one and this hydrogen this hydrogen will form i am writing as h o h okay so o is written here it will be for something like this so so it is o h so now here you can remove a water molecule you can remove a water molecule from here you can remove a water molecule okay to get this oxygen you can see here this oxygen this oxygen you can see over here so it forms a bond between this two so this is the structure you can see here uh, this first carbon and the uh, second carbon they make a bond so this is the structure of sucrose so you can see here you can see here uh, precisely you can see that uh, glucose uh, will uh, obtain the structure of uh, pyranose six membered okay it is a pyranose this is a structure of pyranose while uh, fruct fructose will take the uh, form of uh, furanose okay, similar to the furan furanose okay so they form a uh, disaccharide so this is the structure of uh, sucrose now after uh, completing uh, the properties and structure of uh, disaccharide that is sucrose we shall uh, come back to the polysaccharides so first one is a starch okay, you can see the molecular formula of starch c6h10 or 5n times it is a polysaccharide having large amount of alpha glucose remember it is alpha glucose this alpha glucose this alpha glucose whereas uh, whereas cellulose is beta glucose okay so you have to remember starch is made up of alpha glucose okay now uh, and they are joined by means of uh, glycosidic linkage they are joined by means of glycosidic linkages they are joined by means of glycosidic linkages okay so uh, normally a starch occurs in plant especially in the form of seeds okay usually it is in the form of seeds apart from uh, seeds or you can find starch in potatoes uh, rice wheat uh, maize barley uh, arrowroot etc so these are these are the main uh, commercial sources of starch so uh, coming to the property starch is a white amorphous uh, tasteless powder sparingly soluble in water okay it forms an aqueous uh, colloidal solution when heated with water so uh, usually the starch is made up of two structures one is alpha amylose one is alpha amylose and beta amylose alpha amylose and beta amylose or amylopectin so you can have so it is made up of two structure that is starch the structures are alpha amylose alpha amylose and beta amylose or amylopectin amylose and amylopectin so is important okay first thing the starch is made up of n number of alpha glucose by means of glycosidic linkages okay and the structure we have a two components the structure of uh, starch is having two components one is alpha amylose and the other one is the beta amylose or amylopectin and it is in the 1 is to 4 ratio okay 20 percentage we can have amylose structure and the remaining 80 percentage we can find the amylopectin structure okay so uh, some of the properties of the uh, starch starch on heating up to 200 degrees celsius uh, it uh, the cleavage uh, 
is broken and it forms a small uh, polymer molecule called dextrin. It forms a small polymer molecule called dextrin. Okay, dextrin. So next on hydrolysis, okay, on hydrolysis using any mineral acid, using any mineral acid, you can see any mineral acid. Hydrolysis using any mineral acid. First, it forms dextrin using any mineral acid. First, it forms dextrin. Okay. Then, on further hydrolysis, it forms glucose. Okay. I told you it is made up of n amount of alpha glucose. Second, uh, hydrolysis of starch in the presence of an enzyme uh, diastase. Diastase, uh, you can uh, prepare maltose by treating uh, diastase. Uh, you can uh, obtain maltose from starch and next is uh, a test with iodine so usually uh, the presence of starch can be uh, obtained by iodine test so when uh, iodine is uh, mixed with uh, starch okay, it forms a deep blue coloration so this deep blue is a complex uh, obtained by uh, the iron complex in the alpha amylose, uh, amylose uh, helical structure. So, with iodine, uh, starch will give a uh, deep blue color. So, next let us uh, study the structure of uh, starch. I told you the structure is uh, made up of two components. One is amylose and the amylopectin. So, it is in the ratio 1 is to 4. You can see here amylose, uh, it is having 1,4 glycosidic linkages. You can see the uh, alpha glucose linked, linked with the first carbon and the carbon of the next uh, glucose molecule. Similarly, the amylopectin, you can see the structure of amylopectin uh, along with the 1,4 uh, uh, glycosidic linkage, you can have 1,6 glycosidic linkage also. You can see 1,6 glycosidic linkage also. The first carbon and the sixth carbon of the other molecule. Sixth carbon of the other molecule. So, this is the structure of uh, starch. So, I told you starch comprises of two uh, structural formula one is amylose and the other one is the amylopectin next uh, let us uh, come to the uh, another uh, polysaccharide uh, that is uh, cellulose it is uh, sorry its molecular formula is c6 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 h10 o5 n times okay it is c6 h10 o5 n times okay so they are uh, obtained by different beta glucose unit okay they are obtained by different beta glucose units i told you in the case of a start uh, the uh, components are alpha glucose whereas in the case of uh, cellulose the components are beta glucose or i can say that uh, these uh, beta glucose are joined by beta glycosidic linkages whereas in the case of uh, starch the alpha glucose are, glucose are linked by alpha glycosidic linkages okay. and normally uh, the cellulose uh, is is found in plants so that is a major uh, constitution of the cell wall apart from uh, plant we can find uh, cellulose in cotton and wood cellulose is a white amorphous solid it is insoluble in water and in most of the organic solvents. So, coming to the uh, reactions, uh, cellulose on hydrolysis, okay, okay, when you uh, heat uh, in a uh, dilute mineral acid, cellulose is hydrolyzed to uh, n amount of beta glucose. Okay. And another thing is nitration. When uh, cellulose is nitrated, uh, treated with uh, concentrated nitric acid it, uh, and uh, concentrated sulfuric acid, uh, it yield mono di and tri nitrates out of which uh, the cellulose tri nitrate uh, you might have heard about uh, cellulose uh, tri nitrate okay, cellulose tri nitrate is uh, known as gun cotton and it is used as an explosive and the lower uh, nitrates like uh, mono and di uh, cellulose are used in photographic films in paints and in the manufacture of plastics like celluloid. Okay, it is in the manufacture of the plastics like celluloid. Coming to the acetylation.
so when you uh, when uh, cellulose is treated with the mixture of acetic anhydride uh, glacial acetic acid and uh, some amount of sulfuric acid uh, cellulose uh, forms di and tri acetates so this uh, di and tri acetates are used in the manufacture of uh, synthetic fibers that is known as uh, acetate trion as well as in the paint and varnishes so uh, you can see here you can see the structure of uh, cellulose you can see the structure of cellulose the only difference is that it is a beta d glucose so you can have uh, the structure you can have the uh, beta d it can have a beta glycosidic linkage 14 you can have beta 14 glycosidic linkages whereas in the case of uh, starch it is alpha 14 glycosidic linkages in the case of cellulose it is beta 14 glycosidic linkage because it is uh, formed by the uh, monomers of beta d glucopyranose or beta d glucose so coming to the another uh, polysaccharide that is chitin Uh, chitin is the second most abundant polysaccharide in nature uh, apart from uh, cellulose cellulose is the first one cellulose is the uh, the most abundant uh, polysaccharide is cellulose so chitin is the second most uh, abundant polysaccharide in nature it is present in nature uh, usually it is uh, combined with uh, other polysaccharides and with proteins so chitin is a nitrogen containing polysaccharide uh, only thing is that uh, the oil group of the The cellulose is replaced by n uh, acetylamine that's all okay. uh, we, we shall uh, see the structure then we will come to know that one so chitin is a nitrogen containing polysaccharide and it's a linear polymer of glucose it is called n acetyl glucosamine so this is the difference so normally uh, the main structural uh, constituent of this chitin is the structural constituent of uh, exoskeletons you can see uh, exoskeletons exoskeletons like uh, uh, outer shells of the uh, and some of the anthropods like uh, crabs shrimps okay uh, beetles insect etc so it is made up of chitin chitin uh, combines with the protein uh, forming a, a tough uh, covering that is you can see in beetles similarly it forms a soft uh, and flexible covering that you can see in uh, caterpillars and in some of the insect larvae and in uh, crustaceans uh, such as crabs uh, it is uh, impregnated with a uh, calcium carbonate and form a very strong structure it is also present in uh, cell walls of many fungi so this uh, chitin is insoluble in water and many organic solvents and it is resistant to uh, acids alkali etc it is non toxic biodegradable uh, and has antioxidant uh, properties and is mostly in digestible you can see the uh, structure of this one okay with the n acetyl uh, you can see that uh, group the structure of uh, cellulose it, it is oh okay so this oh is replaced by n acetylamine if the n acetylamine is okay this is the only difference between the structure of chitin as well as cellulose the oil is replaced by n acetylamine okay so that is the structure of uh, chitin similarly if some of the uh, structure uh, if most of the this one uh, deacetylated form of chitin is called as chitosan if you uh, deacetylate chitin some of the uh, if you deacetylate some of the uh, structure that is called chitosan so chitosan is a man made material it is prepared from chitin by deacetylation deacetylation okay so you can remove certain acetyl groups from the uh, chitin to get to form the chitosan okay that is chitosan so it's a derivative of chitin similarly i can say that Uh, chitin is a derivative of uh, cellulose it is a n uh, acetylamine derivative of uh, cellulose and in the last uh, we shall study some of the iodine test okay so usually uh, starch can be identified by treating with the iodine solution so the test reagent uh, is the potassium iodide solution 
okay and that is uh, commonly known as uh, lugol's iodine reagent it is commonly known as lugol's iodine reagent okay so very dilute solution of starch forms a deep blue color okay so starch starch and iodine okay it forms a blue color it forms a blue color blue color so it is due to the uh, uh, formation of a complex okay uh, from the uh, amylous fraction of the uh, of the starch with the uh, iodine so if you use uh, the above uh, lugol's iodine reagent with glycogen so glycogen is a branched polysaccharide uh, composed of glucose units okay so in which uh, usually animals store their excess glucose so that is, that is glycogen okay so when you treat glycogen when you treat glycogen with uh, glycogen when you treat glycogen and this uh, iodine solution okay it yields brown blue color it will say brown brown blue color similarly uh, other polysaccharides like cellulose other polysaccharide like cellulose if you treat cellulose uh, because it is insoluble in water so there won't be any uh, effect with the iodine solution so you will be getting the uh, color of the iodine solution that is lugol uh, lugol's uh, color that is uh, brown yellow color you will be getting the no change in color you will be getting the brown yellow color of the lugol's reagent so uh, this iodine test can used to distinguish certain polysaccharides so starch will give a blue color glycogen will give a brown blue color while cellulose will not react it will give the color of uh, lugol's reagent that is brown yellow color okay so uh, that's about uh, carbohydrates so we have discussed uh, sucrose and its properties polysaccharides like uh, starch cellulose chitin etc and some of the iodine tests okay thank you